Who doesn't enjoy John Kerry windsurfing in his buttock hugging lycra? Is he windsurfing to the upcoming climate summit in Tahiti or Bali or wherever they're holding it? Or will he be taking the old private jet just to up his carbon credits? Joe Biden's climate czar says he's confident he can work with China on persuading them to become carbon neutral by 2060. I believe they'll be uh, Uyghur neutral long before then. And let's face it, on present course, by 2060, there's not going to be anything recognizable as the United States, so who cares? Bill Gates is committed to, as we discussed the other night, turning off the sun, which apparently you can do for about a billion bucks without any government's permission. I don't know why we need to, because Biden's EPA administrator says the new infrastructure bill, which reclassifies everything from a decaf macchiato to your transitioning middle schooler as quote-unquote infrastructure, that bill, says the EPA guy, will apparently save the climate. Just another week in the wacky world of climate change. Mark Morano is the the author of Green Fraud, Why the Green New Deal is Far Worse Than You Think. Full disclosure, I wrote the introduction to the book, uh, but the 300 pages that follow my intro aren't, uh, aren't too shabby. Uh, Mark, it's great to see you. I would have thought after a year of pandemic, a year of economic devastation, uh, that climate change would be an indulgence uh, the Western world could no longer afford. But apparently, uh, the, the lockdown has just been a kind of warm-up act for what's coming. It really has. Exactly. You would think that this would be the lowest of all. And it actually is a very low priority. Even the Harris polling CEO said it's dropped off the map, even among concerns of any Americans. I mean, it's, it's dropped out of there, but not among government officials and the progressive Democratic Party who rules the country right now. And what they've done is they've been inspired. And Jane Fonda's words, a uh, God's gift to the left was COVID because of the lockdowns. And John Kerry is excited specifically because the lockdowns have crushed the economy and now they can rebuild it in a nice green image. And that's what they're trying to do uh, with everything from domestic now to these international meetings with China. Yeah, what's weird is that the restrictions on liberty are painted as somehow uh, environmentally friendly. I saw some lunatic report on the BBC. That was my first mistake, switching on the BBC. But they were saying, oh, Ireland has managed to reduce its carbon footprint uh, because nobody's allowed to go more than three miles from their home. Think how spectacular that would be if we cut it down yeah. from three miles from your home uh, to a mile and a quarter. I mean, this, that's, that's how they're presenting it. Yeah, we look at that as insane government overreach, mm. uh, authoritarianism, mm. but the left looks at it as what an opportunity. At first, the climate activists were jealous of the COVID lockdowns. If we can lock down for a, you know, a virus, we can do the same thing for climate. But now they're inspired by it. And we actually have uh, everyone from Greta Thunberg to the United Nations officials to John Kerry himself. He said the parallels are screaming at us between COVID and climate. So global emissions reduced 7 percent during the lockdown. And so the UK Guardian, the left wing newspaper, is so inspired, they want to lock down every other year. And you know what? We could meet our our UN climate goals if only we did a lockdown every other year, according to the paper. Uh, you mentioned the polls. Why don't, and I, I get that, that the polls say this is number 37 in our priority of everything. <laughs> but why are people reluctant to actually laugh out loud at John Kerry and co with this? I mean, it, when, it, when it comes up officially, people still say, well, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't, they're not quite as scoffing as they ought to be. It's a very good question. Uh, and I think part of the reason is the media has been so effective as, in academia at censoring all the dissent out there, you know, the whole 97%. Mm. So the public is a sort of uh, intimidated by this. And that's the whole point of the green agenda. If you don't agree, you are an evil denier mm. compared to a Holocaust denier. It's all about mm. dissent. And so you feel, you feel as though you can't legitimately dissent. And that, you know, but then you see, you know, the... Uh, what they're doing, and I think we're going to see a growing, massive dissent when the American public realizes, both domestically <laughs> and internationally, what's happening now on climate.
Yeah, if you think the uh, the flatulent bovines of AOC's nightmare make a lot of noise, you should wait until the American people understand what things like that infrastructure bill and the uh, next climate summit are going to do. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that, Mark, and uh, great to have that book out, uh, Green Fraud. It's yes, available uh, now.